All right, man. We are live on Facebook, Agent Revolution Podcast, man. I'm with Brian Casella. Brian, man, thank you so much for taking some time out of your day to join us today. How are you, brother? Hey, Mike. Thanks for having me, brother. Things are great. Business is booming. Uh, couldn't be happier, brother. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well, man. So, hey, yeah, I told you in the uh, in the pre-interview, uh, really what we want to do today is just um, kind of go through the, the the story of your transition from where you were at to where you're at uh, now at eXp um, and talk a little bit about, uh, you know, the story behind that. So um, why don't we do this? Uh, I don't like to talk a lot about, um, you know, your production and all that stuff, but I, I will talk a little bit about it just to kind of set the stage for, um, for those folks listening. Uh, because, I mean, obviously, I think a lot of folks, especially across social media platforms, know you. Um, they know you're the the dude with the Lamborghini, uh, and and know you uh, as the dude who who definitely has some success uh, right out of the gate. And and I'm sure people um, uh, are excited to hear your story. So, uh, why don't we talk just a little bit about how long you've been in real estate? Cool. Uh, I just broke five years in the business now. I got licensed around this time in 2013, and. Before I got licensed, I really adopted that just old school, nitty gritty mentality because the only person who I really watched and got any guidance from was Mike Ferry. I think he was the only one who was really doing anything on YouTube or any video that I could consume and say, well, I don't know what the hell I'm doing, but this guy says, hey, if you just go knock on doors and make calls, you can get some business. And that's just literally what I modeled, man. And luckily my office, the Century 21 that I started with, a couple of the top agents were Mike Ferry trained, and it was just easy for me to absorb that model and just emulate it. And that's all I did. They called me, they literally called me the robot in my first office because all I did was just call, knock, call, knock, and it got results. You know, I went through a period in the beginning where maybe for two or three months I didn't get anything, but then I just got momentum after that. And it was deal after deal after deal. And, you know, you fast forward now, I have a team. Um, we have one, two, three, four agents. I have an admin, and we have two TCs working for us. So, it's been great. Um, we're a little bit behind this year. I think we'll probably end up closing uh, 50 transactions, roughly. Yeah. And uh, yeah. we've bumped up our average price point a lot. I think our average price point this year is around 600, 620, around there. And we've put together some pretty exciting ones. Um, I have one under contract right now for 4.8 in Laguna Beach. And I'm working on another one, hopefully tomorrow, that will be around the same price. So I'm excited to break into that like almost ultra luxury level, you know? Yeah, dude, that's awesome, man. And, and you know what? It, it's great because, I mean, I so enjoy doing this because I get to connect with people like you and hear your story. And, you know, I think a lot about, um, you know, myself because I got into the business. I, I've actually had a license since 2002, but I got into the business and just I did it from a buyer agent's perspective for a few years. And then the market crashed and I got out and I went to corporate America uh, and in 2013, um, just like you, man, I just started watching YouTube videos and I saw people like calling expireds and stuff like that because I didn't have a big, big network um, here in Ohio. I'm mean, from Texas. Right. And I met my wife at Ohio State and then we got married, and moved back to her hometown. So I didn't ha I didn't know anybody. So what I did is I just started picking up the phone man. and, and in 2013. Uh, in November, I just started making expired calls. And by May of 2014, I had 44 listings. And that first year, I sold 57 houses. You know what I mean? And awesome. and so, but my your story is no different than mine, right? It's like, it's. I always tell my team, real estate is simple, but it ain't easy, right? Running a marathon is just putting one foot after another for 26.2 miles, but it ain't easy, right? You got to train for it and you got to show up and take action. So it sounds like you know, that's what you did. And you definitely have ex some ex experience, some success. Uh, and, and you guys have been off and running. So how long have you guys been over at eXp now? Uh, I want to say four months, roughly about four months. Okay. And where were you guys before you came to eXp? Keller Williams. Okay. So man, we, we, uh, we, yeah, we, we came over from Keller Williams in February too. And, uh, so can definitely identify with your story. Tell me a little bit about um, when you first heard about eXp. Like, is this something that you heard about, you know, last year or two years ago? Uh, or is it something you heard about and you knew, hey, right away, this is this is what we're doing? Well, originally, uh, for about two years, me, uh, Colton Lindsay and AJ Maida, we had created the Real Estate Hustlers Mastermind. And I think I want to say about a year ago, maybe a little bit more, AJ, who sponsored me into eXp, made the jump from Keller Williams to eXp. So I'd heard about it a year prior to joining roughly, maybe a little bit less. 
And at first, just like anybody else, you're a little skeptical. You're like, okay, what is this? And AJ, obviously, we're on the phone calls every week, and he just kept sharing with us, you know, the, how much it was growing and uh, all the tools and things that you get access to and kind of how the structure of the company was. And over time, it just it was one of those things that it just started piquing my interest. And then I looked, I was like, you know what? Um, it just sounds not only like a great company, but a phenomenal opportunity to jump into something that's growing and that's new and that's fresh. And I think that's probably the biggest allure for me, aside from all the other stuff that people talk about, like, oh, the rev share, all oh, the stock. To me, that's just like icing on the cake because I really want to look at, OK, this is cloud based. It's progressive. Is it efficient? And our experience thus far has just been great. So the more AJ shared, the more I started looking that way. And then I finally made the jump, like I said, uh, around May of this year. OK. And, and AJ was a Keller Williams agent, too. Right. Is that what you said? Yeah. He had like a 12 or 13 person team in, I think, Charlotte, in North Carolina. OK. And so and so obviously and I do know about that, the Hustlers group, too. And you guys have been around and doing it for a long time, man. And um, certainly, obviously, have had a big impact on uh, on a lot of folks, uh, real estate careers and, and just telling, you know, telling people how to grind it out. I mean, there's 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 one idea that, you know, you know, people get repeat referral business. And then there's this other idea that I think, you know, uh, our umbrella that we fall under where we've just you know, we're just grinders, man, where we just go out and make it happen. And not that that's a bad thing. You know what I mean? I know people run a, a really good business off repeat and referral. And, and there are parts of me that um, that are, 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 are that I envy that. You know what I mean? Because that that business just comes to them. But you and I both know that that it's not really a scalable model uh, and that, you know, grinding it out. Uh, it, it is more of a scalable model, I think, if, if you can build the skill set. But I won't get into a lot of detail with that, man. So, OK, so. You guys have been over for four months. Um, you did your due diligence for a while. You kind of followed AJ and, and let him um, get the bumps and bruises, so to speak. And, and then you guys decided to, to make or you decided as the team leader to make the move. So how did you how did you approach your broker when you decided, uh, you know, we're moving to EXP? What was that conversation like? Uh, my broker was cool. You know, I was with the Keller Williams uh, Pacific Estates over here in Cerritos in California. That's where we hung our license with. Um, it was an easy conversation. You know, I, I had been kind of letting him know that I was thinking about it, but there was no resistance there. There was no negativity. It was a very simple and just straight up conversation. And that has a lot to do with how I am as an individual. I'm just very you know, upfront with people. So I just called him and I said, hey, man, if you want to meet, we can. I'm, I'm going to make this move. Um, I've already made the decision. You know, let's have a conversation about it. I want to let you know. I don't want to just leave and not say anything. Right. And it was a fairly easy conversation because I know that looms in people's mind. Like, well, if I talk to my broker, he's going to try to talk me out of it. You know, if your broker really is looking out for your best interest and you've made the decision, I think it should be an easy conversation for anybody. Yep. Agreed. Agreed. So what when you decided to make the move, what were some of what, what were some of the emotions that you experienced in terms of, oh, my gosh, I got to do this or this could happen? What, was there. Was there any anxiety or, or 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 was there any reluctance at all to make the move? Well, I could say the only reluctance was because it's still kind of like a fresh company. You know, they're working out a lot of kinks. Like right. every once in a while in the beginning, we had a few issues with the cloud or agent services, which now have basically been evaporated and it's super uh, efficient, like much more than it was back then. But I would say if there was any concern, it would be more for maybe our perception to the public, like, oh, this is a new company, we don't know who it is. So maybe the customer confidence maybe might be a little bit lower, you can say, right out the gate when they find yeah. out, oh, EXP, I've never heard of it. But we've, as soon as we share a little bit of information with the customers, they think it's cool. They're like, oh, wow, it's cloud-based. It sounds really progressive and you know new. That was really my only concern, man, because once I decided to make the jump, I saw all the potential in EXP. I was like, man, I want to jump on this train right away because I support it. I think it's an awesome idea. Yeah. And, and and that you know you're the first one that said that, but in in reality, we we talk to a lot of agents in our office um, who say that very same thing. It's like it, they talk about that brand recognition, right? And that's a very valid concern. And and I think what what we find in most cases, like with us moving from Keller Williams over to EXP, is while um, while that's something that we definitely wanted to pay close attention to, we found that you know what our clients. They're, they weren't loyal to Keller Williams or Colwell Banker or XYZ Realty, right? They were loyal to us, right? I, I would imagine that if you went back and, and if you've had you've done 50 deals or whatever this year, if you went back and talked to all 50 of those people and you ask them, hey, you know what brokerage I'm with? 
a lot of them would not even be able to tell you that. They wouldn't even be able to tell you the answer. And so, but it, it doesn't mean that it's not a valid concern for some agents. And, and I know there will be people that are listening to us talk right now that say, you know what, that, that's something that I was thinking about. Are people, are consumers actually going to realize um, what EXP is, right? And what they're doing. And, and, and that's all part of, uh, of, of what we need to do as realtors is be able to educate them on who we are and what the value that we can bring as EXP, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And, and you said it, they're not going to remember, right? They, they hire us. They don't hire Keller Williams or Century 21 or Berkshire Hathaway or whoever it is. They trust us. We're the ones who put in the work. And at the end of the day, uh, what you just asked is a concern for a lot of newer agents. I noticed they're like, well, I'm thinking about going to EXP, but I'll kind of want to go with Century 21 or Keller Williams because I feel like the public is going to perceive it better. But it really doesn't matter. Right. I think uh, people put more concern on it themselves than the public. And once you actually have a conversation with somebody and they see that, you know what you're doing, I don't think it matters. You could be with Bob's Realty and they're not going to care. Right. Right. And so you guys, so you made the switch four months ago. Um, so you made the decision as a team leader to come over. You talked to the brokerage. Um, you had a conversation. It sounds like that went well. That's the way you want it to go, by the way. You want it, you want, if your brokerage is truly, if you built a good relationship with your broker, um, they should support you in whatever endeavors that you decide uh, to choose, right? I mean, they should come from a place of abundance, and not scarcity. And unfortunately, um, that didn't happen with us, but I'm glad it happened for you. So you, 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 the next thing you got to do, right, is you got to, you make the, uh, you, you make the decision as a team leader. You, then you've got to, you got, you got to tell the team, right? And, and so while, you know, a solo agent can make a decision and only have an impact on themselves and, and their personal business, when you as a team leader are, are making a decision. You're making that decision not only for yourself, but everybody that works with you, right? That is committed to you. So I'm curious, how did you arrange that meeting? What did that conversation sound like? Well, it was very simple. You know, I just, I said, look, if I'm going to sell this idea to them, obviously I want them to support. All I need to do is highlight all the benefits, right? So the conversation just stemmed about how it's going to benefit everybody, not just me. That made it very easy. When I started talking about less fees, because I have my own office. All my agents are working in here, right? Less overhead we have to pay. You have a better split. Your cap is going to be lower. You know, once I got into three or four details, it was like, okay, we're in. There was really no resistance because it's one of those things where a lot of people will, and I'm sure they probably asked you, they're like, Mike, I mean, this EXP thing has got, it's got to be too good to be true. Like, there's no way that EXP is that good. So once I actually broke it down to them, it was simple. I even had a AJ who sponsored me in. He's always available. So if I need to bring him in to answer any questions he can. And it was a fairly easy conversation. I don't think that meeting was more than 10 minutes and everyone was just like, yeah, we're on board with whatever you want to do. It sounds like it's great. Let's do it. That's awesome, man. And, and you know, what's great too is, is like one of the things that I like most about being over here, I mean, you've, you've done kind of what we've done in that we, we have our own office space here. We've kind of created our own culture. We, we have handpicked um, who we want in this building, most of whom uh, are on our team, right? And and so that was one big benefit for us. Uh, uh, and you know, I was I was actually getting ready to o open uh, my own market center, and we Jay Kinder, you know, kind of presented the idea of uh, this EXP cloud based brokerage to me, and I just thought it made. I thought it made more sense, not for me, but for my team, because ultimately the only person who would have won if we opened our own market center is me. Uh, my team really would not have benefited much from that. But in making the move to EXP, uh, we added in those additional layers of passive income opportunity in, 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 in company provided stock, right? Uh, and then And then hitting specific benchmarks for stock and then not only that, but the revenue share opportunity, which was so much bigger than the profit share opportunity at Keller Williams. I think I think the, the biggest profit share check I ever got at Keller Williams was like it was like three hundred and thirty six dollars. And I think it was like June or July of last year. And in my fourth month here, I got a check for 10 times that it was, literally, it was like three. It was like thirty three hundred dollars and some change. And nice. it's like dude, this is sick. This opportunity is amazing. And right, we're, we're just right about like 15,000 agents right now. And KW is like 170,000. 
And so just imagine the opportunity for people, the agents that are getting in right now, like yeah. yourself and, and, and me and, and all these other guys and, and anyone else that's joined, they get to present this opportunity and they get to be the people that are going to benefit, um, you know, 20, 25, 30 years from now when those revenue share checks uh, are just coming in every month and, you know, whether they sell real estate or not. And so, you know, that's the, that was the big kind of aha for me to use a Keller Williams term. Um, but for you, I mean, I would imagine that when you sat down specifically to talk with your guys and gals, um, that that had to be something that you felt really good about as a team leader because you couldn't necessarily offer that at Keller Williams. Yeah, absolutely, man. Huge. That was huge because I always asked even the agents that work for me and other agents, what's your plan once you start selling, stop selling real estate? Can you survive? And I think a lot of agents don't think about that. They're like, oh, I'm going to sell real estate forever. It's OK. And there's no plan. Right. If they don't buy real estate, what are they going to do? So this is something that I was even telling my team. I said, look, whether we make the move or not, you guys are going to be doing your thing. You're going to be selling. So why not be in a position where while you're selling, you're building something that's going to be completely passive that will have you set maybe in 10 or 15 years. Yeah. So it literally was just like a no brainer. Right. And I tell people it's the icing on the cake because I think people don't have the vision to see it's going to be, like you said, in 10, 15, 20 years. And just like yourself, I mean, in three months, I think my top rev share has already been like 24 or 2,500 bucks and I've just gotten with the company. So again, that's really sweet, but I can see that being 10, 20 times that in the next couple of years. And I'm like, whoa, this is exciting. Cause now I can start creating a life that I really wanted without having to be stuck to selling X amount of houses every year and being stuck on the hamster wheel forever. Right. And I think that's the vision that a lot of people don't look at. And a lot of agents aren't thinking about that because our industry is so to the grindstone every year. Nobody really thinks about, well, what do I really want to be doing this in five, 10, 15 years? And they just make the assumption that they do. And then after a couple of years, I'm sure you've seen it, people just start burning out and then they fall off on the wayside because they have no investments or something like this, which is genius. Yeah. Yeah. And, it, and it's great for like for I mean, you talk about like recruiting and retention, man, like what he, I mean, Glenn just nailed it, man, because I mean, if you've got even let's let's just say like you have a top producer right on your team that's just a I mean, that's just crushing it. Right. And. And, you know, ultimately they decide, hey, I'm, you know what, I'm going to go do this on my own. Right there. There's really no there's no benefit. Uh, there's there's no reason why they would even leave EXP. They might leave your team. And that's great, man. Right. Because that that just says, hey, you know what? I've done my job. I've created this unbelievable individual. I've given so much value into their life that, you know what, they feel like they can go out and do it on their own now. Right. And so but by by keeping them in the company. So if they built any revenue share at all, which, you know, they probably have if they're a superstar agent and, and then they have also agent ownership. Right. And they're vested after three years. Why the hell would they leave? Right. I mean, there's, they're, they're just probably not. There's no there's there's no reason why they would leave. So not only do you have you done a great thing by helping them go out on their own, but then you've also created that revenue share for yourself. Uh, and hopefully for them, right, to, to build that and and, and, uh, and, and, and and put into that down the road. Yeah, uh, you just said it. I can sum that up in two words. Everybody wins. So everybody no wins. Everybody and, wins. And, 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 and so for you, like, I'm curious, like, so now the dust probably is starting to settle, right? The transition is still new. I mean, you're four months in. Um, it, it, it For you guys, like, what, did this change anything for you at all? I mean, did it? Like if, if we're being completely candid, did it did it change your goals? Did it change? Did it you, do you feel like it affected your business at all? It seems like there's a new level of excitement now because they know what they can build. Right. They have that additional thing like the revenue share and the stocks that they didn't have before. So I feel like there's a little extra fire under everybody's ass right now, which is awesome, because then me as a leader, I train my people all the time and I inject that in them. But to have something else do that, I think it's just, again, like the sprinkles on the cupcake. You know what I mean? Yep. So what is like, what is your goal with all this now, man? Because you're I mean, you feel probably like like an OG, right? Because you feel like you've been doing it for a long time and you have I mean, you you hustle and, and, and that that takes a lot out of you. Right. That that it, it is almost a natural evolution. Like when you're a hustler like that to build a team, because it's 
the reality of it is it's probably not a sustainable model. It's, it's more of a, you know, you're probably going to burn out uh, in, in four or five, six years. So you really want to leverage yourself, right, with bringing in good quality people. So for you, Ryan, what is like what? So what's the goal now for you? You're, you're at EXP. You have this team. Like, where are you taking this thing, brother? Well, um, that's a great question. There's so much more I can do now, now that I'm with EXP, right? By virtue of me doing what I do on social media, I naturally attract agents who believe in what I say and who are attracted to my style and what I do. Therefore, I know I'm going to attract somebody who either wants to mold themselves into a great agent or probably is already a pretty damn good agent. So now I get them in the company. I'm building the rev share because I know that's going to explode in the next couple of months and year for sure. Because, I mean, I already have, I think, mid 20s in my first level and I have another like 10 or 12 in process right? and it's just and it's almost 100% from just me doing stuff on social media not me going out and recruiting not me going out and having coffee interviews with people it's just literally organically because I put out the message yeah so uh, you know what I see happening is like I just got back from Jacksonville right I, I flew out I spoke for a, a company right I'm doing that a lot more I really want to take the social media side not only to help me grow my business which by the way, every single person that works for me, I virtually, except for my girlfriend, Loida, I attracted from social media as well. So I just really wanna keep growing the team. Um, I know we really wanna break the 1 million uh, GCI mark. We haven't uh, broken that yet, so I'm really excited to do that. But I'm, I think within the next 12 to 18 months, I'm gonna be able to fully step out from the team and let that thing kind of just keep growing the way it is. And then with this whole social media side, now, especially with EXP, I can start doing other things outside of real estate more. I have more time, I'm creating more income, and it's just making my life easier. Again, doing the same thing I wanted to do anyway, which to me is a no-brainer. Right, and, and so you're so so essentially what I'm hearing you say is that you're doubling down on your social media game because you know that that is a that is a great channel for you to provide value to the masses and get the word about 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 what we're doing at EXP, right? So Tell like tell me a little bit about what your what your online strategy is. Like, how are you? What what, what does the game look like for you on, on social media? Well, it's always been this thing where I've just put out right, and it, and it's just shifted and evolved over time. Because I I first started doing stuff on social media just to document my journey. I was like, hey, I'm a young guy getting into real estate. Um, I have no experience. I'm probably in the same shoes that a lot of you are going to be in because I have no advantages per se. I don't have any connections. I've never done sales. This is the first time I'm really wearing a suit to work. So I'm just going to go out there and make it happen. And over time, I started just not only attracting a lot of consumers and building a huge referral base, which I think in July, I sent out six referrals across the nation. But I've also now attracted a ton of agents. And that's led to me speaking. Like I've gone internationally and spoke in Australia earlier this year. I've spoken with uh, the guys from Million Dollar Listing three times now. It's about to be the fourth time because I'm doing something for the California Association of Realtors in October. I'm going to speak at their expo. So my strategy with it is just keep putting out value, attracting the right people, raise the the level you can say of the industry, because I know people who follow what I teach are going to be better agents, period. And from there, uh, it's always been what I said in the beginning. I'm just going to give value and help people because that's what I thought was missing in the beginning. I didn't have two or three other guys, maybe in my age bracket, who were doing this, sharing their journey, saying, man, I was in tears today. I lost a listing, but hey, here's what I learned from it. So I know the next time I need to handle this objection or whatever it is. And now I have almost a thousand videos for free on YouTube and probably three or 400 that I've done on Facebook. And I know I'm just putting out what a lot of people are going to go through or what they've been through and they can get some perspective on it. So with me, it's just been that one word value. And I just keep putting it out, out and out and everything else is just kind of falling into place. When did you realize like the power of social media? I saw it years ago, man. Like when I started documenting my journey about what I was doing, it was probably about six months in. So early 2014, I said, I think people are sleeping on this, this video thing, this YouTube thing, this Facebook thing. They don't, they don't see what I see. So I saw that vision of what I'm doing now and what could be created. And I tell a lot of agents and people even outside of real estate, I say, we don't need Hollywood anymore. You can create your own brand globally and explode it with your phone. I mean, our iPhones record 1080p high definition and you can upload it straight to YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and they syndicate everywhere. That's all I did until I've done recently some Facebook ads for real estate actual customers. All of my brand and social media growth has been 100% organic. I haven't put a penny into paid ads and this and that. 
I started doing some click funnel stuff on the side with another guy, but that's again, that's separate. That's not to grow my brand. So the hundred thousand followers I almost have on YouTube, the you know, five thousand friends and twelve thousand followers on Facebook, you know, the almost thirty thousand followers on Instagram, that's just me putting out value and attracting people. Yeah. Right. But yeah. I saw that years ago and I think a lot of people maybe weren't committed or they just didn't have the vision. Right. Right. And and, and for those watching and listening right now, right now, it's not too late to start. And I, I think that, you know, while while we have that some of some of us have those 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 limiting beliefs that, oh, you know, well, you know, he started that, you know, in 2013. Right. It, it's like, no, it's like there's no better time to start than right now. Right. I mean, as it relates to EXP, we're still a 15,000 agent company. Right. And so the, the opportunity is huge. So if you want to be like Brian, man, you, you know, document your journey even if, if you if you feel like you don't have that much to, to document um, just talk about the struggles that just be real right just talk about the struggles that you're going through that's exactly really what you did isn't it absolutely and I think that's the missing piece for a lot of uh, individuals who get into the social media game is I just showed the world who I was it wasn't just about real estate I get recognized everywhere now and yeah i'm known as a realtor because i branded myself that way but that's not me a lot of people think oh well i can only talk about real estate no you don't and at the same time because what you said is i hear that all the time well it's too late let's say mike just copied what i did right for all the people watching there's going to be a segment of the people watching who are going to like him more than me and vice versa so there's always a chunk always an audience for everybody because they're going to like his style more or how he looks more it doesn't matter Anybody can come into this game and they're going to take a portion of the market because some people will relate to them more. And that's all it is. There's plenty of eyeballs out there for everybody. You just need to take your piece of it. And it's readily available for anybody. I don't care how old you are, where you live, and what you're doing. And especially if you're watching this and you're in a smaller city, it is just waiting to be took over. I know some people who are doing minimal work on social media that are in real estate in smaller cities and they're just annihilating the market share because of just their social media presence in videos. Like I know people, like for example, I went to Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, there's a, a girl that works for the company. Her entire business is from her free Facebook videos and her Instagram, that's it. She generates a ton of leads, gets a ton of listings from that, and she doesn't spend a penny. So for all of you who are maybe deathly afraid of cold calling and door knocking, there you go. But again, she's been doing it consistently for about a year and a half or two years. So you have to put in the work, whether you do it virtually, whether you do it on the phone, it has to be done. Right, right. And and that that's that's some that's some massive value that that you're dropping, brother. And I and I appreciate that. So like, okay, so for you guys, man, um, so the goal for you is it sounds like to ultimately kind of work your way uh into more of a um um into more of a CEO type role where maybe you're not going on so many listing uh or, or buyer appointments for that matter. I don't know if you're still doing that. Some people some people do that, um, but you want to. So you kind of want to be the visionary for the company, and you want to continue to help it grow, right? You want to continue to help it grow. You want to continue to grow your Rev Share group. Um, you want to continue to spread the word about EXP. So, what is your? Um, it's funny because I I asked um, uh, I asked my guy yesterday this, and uh, I, I'm going to start asking this because I think it's a, a great question. Like what? What is your rev share goal? Like ultimately, where do you want to take this thing? And, and, and hopefully you're willing to share that number. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I've told people like when I was at I went to my first EXP event for this uh, little mastermind they had in uh, Vegas recently. Yeah. I don't know if you went. Um, I was there and I remember sitting in the audience already and I was telling the people around me, I said, in six months or a year, I'm going to be speaking on stage. Watch. So by the end of the year, I want 100 people in my first line and I'm going for it. And I think I'm pretty much on track to do that with all the people I have in process. But I, before the end of the year, I want to be making at least ten to twelve thousand a month. And by the end of twenty nineteen, I want to see if I can crack uh, fifty sixty. Nice, brother. That is nice. Yeah, my my personal goal I'll share is is to get to twenty thousand a month by the end of the year, and uh, ultimately want to get to where uh, like some of these legends are making it. You know, where like Brett Gove and Rob Flick and these guys like to start making like a hundred grand a month. I think would be uh, a realistic opportunity and. Listen, I mean, like we hustled right when we did expireds. We hustled when we did for sell by owners. Hey, now we're hustling to get agents, right? So it's 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 different, but it's the same, man. So um, you know, I'll wrap this up, man. And and this has been just an absolute blast for me and, and being able to connect with you and stuff. So 
let me ask you this, man. Um, so that agent or that broker that's listening to us right now, um, who may be thinking about making the move to EXP, or they're just trying to learn a little bit more about yeah. um, about the company, what do you say to that person? I would say a lot of the concerns that you have in your mind are little fears that you're creating, right? Because even with EXP or any other company, no company is perfect. However, I feel that EXP has taken what everyone else has done made it better and also revolutionized their style right with the whole cloud thing and it's actually working it's efficient i mean we get paid on time any little detail people have asked me when i give them the answer again it's almost like it's too good to be true and no opportunity is better than now right i'm kind of kicking myself in the ass for not have gotten the switch <laughs> earlier right right but i can tell you that a lot of the fears and concerns that you have are not there make the jump now's Ooh. the time Love it. Love it, man. So, hey, how can people connect with you, Brian, if they want to engage you for a speaking event or they want to talk EXP or, or anything else? Yeah, if they want to chat, Facebook is the best. Um, if you want to contact me on any other social media platform, it's just my name, at Brian Casella is my Twitter, my Instagram. If you message me, I'll, 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 you'll find me, right? And BrianCasella.com is my website for the speaking gig thing. There's a little entry form I have on there and we can chat. Awesome, man. Hey, thank you so much. I know you're busy, brother. Listen, I wish you the best of luck. And I hope that we can connect in New Orleans in October. Absolutely. I'm planning on going. All right, brother. Thanks Bye, so Mike. much. Bye. See you, dude.